Recording audio in Adobe Audition CC is a very simple process. However, it may seem overwhelming for beginners with this interface. I will show how to record audio in Audition and get an audio file from that recording. If your Audition interface looks different, go to Window, Workspace. Audition offers different types of workspace suited to different kinds of work like mastering or simple audio editing. We will start with the default, which is suitable for beginners. We can think of using different types of workspace once we learn the basics. Check that the default workspace is selected for you, and we are ready. The most important setting for audio recording is microphone selection. Go to Adobe Audition settings to check if the correct microphone is selected. Select audio hardware. Check the correct microphone is showing as the default input. My microphone is connected through a Scarlett 2i2 audio interface. You will see either your audio interface name or microphone name. Select the proper microphone from the list if the correct microphone is not selected. If your microphone is connected to your computer, but you do not see that, restart Adobe Audition. You may see a message about channel mappings when changing the microphone. I will get back to this channel mapping in a moment. Click Yes to continue. Above the audio hardware, you will see audio channel mapping. You should see the microphone you set for input in the channel mapping. Channel mapping is fixed most of the time automatically, you should check to ensure everything is set up correctly. I want to record through Scarlett, so I will change back to that. Scarlett is also my system default, so I can choose that. System default means whatever input you set as system default, Audition will use it. You can see your system defaults from the sound settings of your OS. The default output is the device through which audio will be played back. So when you listen through after recording, this output device is used. It is also set as the system default. If I change my system default output, it will change automatically. My input output is set correctly, and I will click OK. Click on the record button, and you have to configure some recording parameters. Give it a name, and you can navigate to different audio files in Audition by this name. I will give my test record. A sample rate of 44.1 kHz is fine, and you do not need to change it. There is no apparent benefit to choosing a higher sample rate. With a higher sample rate, the audio files become bigger. A microphone captures sound as an analog signal and needs to be converted to digital data to store audio in a computer. The sample rate means how many samples of analog data will be taken during this conversion. A higher sample rate also requires sophisticated audio devices to work truly. So as we will not benefit from a higher sample rate, choose 44.1 kHz or 48 kHz. Though a higher sample rate has no benefit for voice recording, you should not choose a lower sample rate, like 32 kHz or more down. With a lower sample rate, all the audio details may not be captured, and we will get poor quality audio. I will choose 44.1 kHz. The recording channel can be either mono or stereo. For voice, mono is fine. For music recording, you can choose stereo. With a stereo channel, you can add different effects to the left and right sides of the headphone. As with a simple voiceover, we will not add such an effect, I will choose mono. Moreover, we can convert a mono recording to a stereo when needed. Keep bit depth to 32 bits float. You may not notice any difference between 24 bits recording and 32 bits recording. But 32 bits recording is flexible during audio recovery. The meter you see at the bottom has zero as the maximum value. Audio that goes beyond zero at this meter can cause distortion or clipping. In the post-processing after recording, if the audio goes beyond zero, 32 bits can recover audio without distorting. If all these talks seem too technical, you can ignore them. Just remember 32 bits float is best, and you should record in 32 bits when possible. Once I click OK, the recording will start. During recording, this meter plays an important role. You should try to hit minus 12 in this meter during the loudest peaks. That means when you are talking in the microphone, the loudest words should hit around minus 12. Not every word has to hit minus 12, only the loudest. Also, it should be around minus 12 during the loudest peaks, so if you cross minus 12 from time to time, that is fine. To stop recording, click the stop button. Okay, so why is so much attention needed to record around minus 12? I will explain that in a moment. Let's hear the recording a bit. Welcome to this Adobe Audition recording tutorial. 
the goal of this recording. The recording level I have got needs to be increased. And here comes the importance of recording around minus 12. Generally, after recording audio, you have to do some post processing. During post processing, you will boost some of the signals. If you record around minus 12, you have a headroom of 12. So if you increase the volume by 12 dB or less, no distortion or clipping will happen. If you record close to zero, your sound will be distorted by the slightest boost. Recording around minus 12 makes the audio editing process easier later. The final audio should be around minus 3. So you may ask, if the final audio should be around minus 3, why not record close to minus 3? You can record that close to zero, but that will limit your editing process. Also, during talking, you have to be very cautious so that the meter is not crossing zero. As you can always boost your recording in the post-processing, recording around minus 12 gives a lot more flexibility. After recording, I got a waveform. You can edit this waveform like you edit texts. For example, I can select and delete some parts of the waveform. Besides the waveform, you can see the spectral display of the audio. These are toggle buttons to switch between displays. Spectral editing mainly suits advanced users. Besides recording and editing a single waveform, Audition supports multi-track. Multi-track editing is required in many cases, like podcasts and music recordings. I am not going into details of multi-track recording, but showing you briefly what it is. Multi-track works with sessions. You can create a session for multi-track and save the session. I will keep all these settings to default and create a multi-track session. You can see four tracks in the window, and you can add more tracks or remove some tracks from here. You can record your audio separately in these tracks or drag existing recordings. For example, I already recorded my test record, and I can drag that to any of the tracks I wish. I will share more features of multi-track in future videos. For now, let's learn how to get audio from a single track. I can go back to my single track recording in the editor. I can see my test record appearing here. You can apply different effects to your audio from effects racks. Audition has many audio effects, and I will discuss some of the basic effects in a future video. You will get the link to that video in the description. After recording the audio, I said the meter's volume level should hit minus 3. Audition has an effect on achieving that easily. Audition has effects shortcuts in favorites. Normalize sets the audio level of a recording. The maximum loudness can be achieved from normalized to minus 0.1 dB. I will normalize it to minus 3 dB, which works well with voice recording. You can see the peak audio in this waveform is touching minus 3. If I play this audio, you will see it is hitting minus 3 in the meter during the loudest peak. The, by hitting minus 12, I mean you have to hit the loudest peak for minus 12. So far, this audio is inside Audition. How do you get an audio file from this and use it in other projects or share it somewhere? Go to File, Save. You can give that file a name. For example, I will add a final at the end. You can choose a location to save the file. I will choose Desktop. You can also set the file format you want, like MP3 or any other audio format. I choose WAVE as that is a lossless format. The format can also be changed from here. There is a checkbox to include markers or other metadata that stores extra audition metadata. You will see an additional file beside WAVE if this one is checked. If I now go to desktop, I can see the WAVE file. You see, my test record final WAVE file is here. I can send this WAVE file to someone or use it for my project or upload it somewhere. You can also see an extra PKF file that contains metadata. PKF file is not important for playing audio or sharing, you can ignore that file. WAVE is the audio file I got from my recording. I hope you now understand how to record audio, increase its loudness, and get an audio file from that recording using Audition. Thanks for watching, and see you next!